I was in Orlando recently and I had some thoughts. I wanna compare Tampa and Orlando a little bit. Here we go. Woo! Sam with the Living in Tampa channel and thank you for coming by. We make videos for you about what it's like to live and move to Tampa. And today I wanna to compare Tampa and Orlando a little bit. But if you are interested in moving to Tampa, we wanna hear from you. So call us, text us, email us. We would love to get together, have a Zoom call, have a phone call, really help you process the move, help you process your interest in the area. So I have this idea I've been thinking about a lot lately, just kind of the layers of Tampa. You have like, city, suburbs, beach. And I was realizing Orlando kind of has layers too, and they're really similar layers. So if Tampa is city, suburbs, beach, Orlando is kind of like city, suburbs, Disney. And beach and Disney, I'll, I'll let them be kind of similar. They're both amusement. But overall, I'm kind of anti-Disney. I, I don't care about Disney for a lot of reasons. But this video is not gonna be about why I don't like Disney. This video is going to be about comparing Tampa and Orlando through this lens of these layers. So let's start by talking about the city. Let's talk about the downtowns. So usually if I'm in Orlando, I'm in the College Park area, which is just north of downtown. Up by Winter Park, which is kind of a cool like old, I mean, South Tampa, Winter Park are kind of equivalents across Tampa and Orlando cool older area that's on water and really interesting. I'm usually close to downtown, so I'm pretty familiar with what Orlando downtown is like. And as you've seen from this channel, I am very familiar with the Tampa area overall. And there's a guy in Orlando, Ken Posick, kind of a friend of a friend that has his YouTube channel, similar to mine. And he compared Tampa and Orlando recently. And some of the things he pointed out about downtown stood out to me. And he agreed that Tampa downtown is, is winning that battle right now. There is currently, when well, Tampa and St. Petersburg combined, 20 billion in new luxury condo buildings under construction across Tampa and St. Petersburg. Most of that being in downtown Tampa. Some of those being along Bay Shore, but most of that being downtown. And these condo buildings are actually very pretty. They do this kind of parking garage thing though, where it's like a really wide parking garage and then the condo building gets narrower as it goes up. And it seems like they just, they just do that with all of them now. And that's kind of unique to me. I don't care for it. The look of it on the bottom, as you go up, it looks nicer. But let's just do like apples for apples downtown. Tampa is on the Tampa Bay. Kind of a lot of water in this downtown area. The downtown area is not that big. So a lot of people, when they think of downtown Tampa, they're thinking of um, Hyde Park and South Tampa and downtown and Tampa Heights. So they're kind of lumping this whole area together, kind of all along the river. And, and the river walk beautifully connects all of these areas. A lot of areas in central Orlando, downtown Orlando are also on water. There's a lot of lakes in this area and I've even taken those like really fun boat tours through these lakes and a lot of them connect with these cool old canals that are behind these old turn of the century houses. One of my favorite things about that tour is actually the old trees that they point out. Some oak trees and some cypress trees are close to a thousand years old. I don't think the cypress trees are quite that old, but some of the oak trees are over a thousand years old. I like that. So they both have some water. Then let's look at sports. Tampa has some sports going on. Um, hockey in downtown, the Bucks not far away, just across the bridge in St. Pete, you have the Rays. There's a soccer team too, is that the Rowdies? Um, a lot of sports, and then also a lot of minor league baseball. Orlando, has the Orlando Magic right there in downtown. And we're still kind of talking downtown. So in Tampa, you can, the hockey stadium's right there in the middle of downtown. The football stadium's not far. The baseball stadium is a little bit further. When it comes to Orlando, the Orlando Magic is really close to downtown, but that's kind of all you've got. And forgive me, I'm not really a soccer fan. Orlando City Football Club is there too. Okay, and then downtown Tampa versus Orlando in terms of housing. As I've pointed out before, this, this Tampa Tomorrow Instagram page talks about all these new developments in downtown Tampa, and there is tons. Like there, the housing in this area is really growing rapidly, and there's already quite a bit there. Orlando doesn't have that, where it's kind of like, luxury, the condos get nicer as you go up, and then there's like mixed um, commercials and restaurants and stuff on the, the ground floor. There's some of that kind of in the works in Orlando, but Tampa is just a little bit ahead in that. 
Okay, now let's talk tourism versus tourism. First, we'll talk about Tampa. Tampa does have the kind of man-made attractions, it has uh, Bush Gardens, it has the, the zoo, it has a big aquarium, it has the Clearwater Marine Aquarium, it's more like a rescue facility. Um, and then it has the natural things. And we'll, we'll get to Orlando. Tampa has beaches, beautiful beaches, beautiful springs, beautiful wilderness. But a lot of you, if you're drawn to Tampa, it's because of the beaches. And there's not just like one or two nice beaches. It's not just Clearwater Beach and St. Pete Beach. They're all along here. It's really like a 40 mile stretch of white sand beaches. Okay, Orlando, Disney, Universal, SeaWorld. I was working at this conference at one of the Universal hotels and it's just, Orlando is mind boggling to me. This whole like Disney Universal um, ecosystem just feels like concrete and big smiles, big fake smiles everywhere. And it just drives me a little crazy. And I'm not talking about the, the tourists. I'm talking about the staff at the hotels. They just, they, they're on level 10 all the time, helpful, kind, which I get it. I'm here, I'm complaining about people being nice. I appreciate it, but it's just this experience and it's not something that really is attractive to me. Orlando does still have a lot of natural things and a lot of other, other man-made things. We really love like the Children's Museum there. There's a couple other things like that that make Orlando kind of cool. And then it still has access to those natural springs. You can come over here to the beaches, which are, you know, it's gonna take you two hours or you can go to the other coast and a little bit less time to the beach. If you want both of those things, if you want the Disney Universal ecosystem and you also want the beach to be two hours away, Orlando's a really good option. But, but that Disney Universal area, it just feels so commercial. Then there's some suburbs around there and then I don't, it just has this certain kind of feel. And I mean, Walt Disney was very intentional with creating that feel. He did it, but you have to really want that to be there. Okay, and then let's go suburbs versus suburbs. So Tampa suburbs, you guys know, I've talked about them a lot, mostly on the north and to like the southeast and east. Tampa is surrounded by water on one side, so it can't really grow, I mean, really on the, the west side and the south side, so it can't really grow those directions. Those tend to be older areas right there. And then to the north, you have a lot of new suburbs that have been growing and growing, like Wesley Chapel, Lutes, Lando Lakes, Odessa, and then to, even all the way up to like Spring Hill, up, up into Hernando County. And then to the east and south, I mean, all the way over into Lakeland, but mostly closer to Tampa, you have Brandon Riverview, um, Why Mama, Sun City Center, all the way down to like Parrish. But then in Orlando, it's kind of all around. And you know, a lot of these suburbs are built pretty close to Disney, kind of as close as possible. With the really popular one right now, Winter Garden, I just drove through that area on the, on the west side of Orlando. And I actually kind of like that area. I don't typically love like a really uh, master plan community kind of feel, but this area that it's out near, there's a lot of really cool natural springs out there. Even this video I made recently about Wakiva Springs, um, that was out by Winter Garden, out in this area, Apopka, all those kind of towns out there, and Claremont where they're building a lot of new neighborhoods and you have a little bit more space. But overall, the developers are pretty similar or sometimes the same, and there's a lot of stuff going on. I actually have a client that works in like large scale construction, like construction management, and he's he and they just moved down here from Memphis. But every since they moved to the Tampa area, everyone is telling them like you guys should have moved to Orlando because Orlando is the place to be if you build apartments. So apparently they're building a lot of apartments in Orlando. But just to wrap up the point and to give a little surprise here. Orlando, the big advantage is Disney, Universal, SeaWorld, that whole ecosystem. If you like that, it's there. Tampa, I think the big advantage actually is St. Petersburg, which is a different city, but it's part of the whole metro area of Tampa. St. Petersburg is really cool and old and has its own community and vibe and it's drawing, you know, condo towers and, and good restaurants and all these kind of things to that area. And that's what I think is actually the big advantage of Tampa. 
We wanna hear from you. Give us a call, send us a text, send us an email, and let's see how we can help you make the move down to this area. And check out some of these other videos. So right up here is the most underrated things about the Tampa area. I want you to watch that one. So make sure you click it and watch all the way through. Thanks for coming by.